and welcome everyone to this week's edition of Learning Space. Uh, I'm Nicole Gallucci with CosmoQuest, uh, also uh, a postdoc here at, in uh, Southern Illinois University. And I'm joined by my co-host, Georgia Bracey. Mm -hmm. Hello. Hello, Dan, just down the hall from me here at SIUE. Hi. And our uh, two guests this week are Jolene Carlberg. Hello. And Rachel Beaton. Wave. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> um, and uh, we are going to be talking about uh, some children's books uh, with science and astronomy. And the first thing I wanted to do, so we usually do a hands-on demo of some sort, but instead we're just going to kind of talk a little bit about some of our favorite children's books. And I know, Georgia, you had one. Uh, that was pretty popular in the comment threads. <laughs> <laughs> Who knew? <laughs> it's a great book, though. So I don't know if I can. I have. Yeah. Ooh, ooh, there it is. This is a a wonderful book. It's uh, the Stars by H. A. Ray, who is also the guy that does the Curious George series, which I think is just a fantastic thing too. Um, but this book, I actually. Um, must have been about 10 or 11. I stole it from my brother. Uh, my brother actually got it. I don't know if he knows this. My, um, he got it for a birthday or something from my grandmother and I remember just seeing it and it looked good and um, I you know, took it away and started reading it and it's really one of the reasons that I got interested in astronomy in the first place. But it's got all kinds of great um, some stories about the constellations, and it's really a guide to the sky. I'm just going to show. Ooh, there we are. Um, it redraws the constellations in sort of a non-traditional way. Although some of you guys might see these as kind of familiar because some of the portable planetariums use this way of drawing the constellations in their planetarium. So um, this kind of drawing style is out there, but he basically took the traditional style, the Greek style of doing the constellation uh, pictures and redid it in a way that really tried to look like what the constellations were. So he, you know, drew the twins as little stick figures holding hands and he drew, you know, the bear and the lion and they all, you know, really looked much more um, like what they're supposed to be. Not quite as fancy, but all just stick figures. So it was a very uh, friendly guide to the sky. Um, plus he has um, stories about all the constellations, so you can remember um, where to find them, how some of them go together, they're linked by a story. And then as you go towards the end of the book, there's some more um, advanced things, I guess. Um, one thing, I guess it's a it's a northern hemisphere centric book, so yeah. it's got the northern sky in it, but at the end it does have um, some plates that show you the constellations from the southern hemisphere point of view, which is good. And uh, then there's some um, more advanced topics too that he treats a little bit, just on an introductory level, um, size of the universe, speed of light, things like that. So it's a great introductory book. Um, but I still use it because it's just, it's my way of finding, it's how I learned the constellations and it's my way of finding, you know, my way through the stars. Um, the first copy of this book that I had, that I bought for myself, not the one that I stole, um, was a paperback <laughs> copy and I used to take it out observing all the time and of course it got, you know, kind of mangled and the pages started falling out and the dew would get on it and it would get all crumply and so um, I ended up taking it all apart, sort of flattening it out and laminating it. So, and then I would three hole punch it and I have, I still have this thing in a binder that I have in the trunk of my car. And I still use it to, you know, get oriented in, in the night sky when I go out. Um, when I was teaching fifth grade, um, I had this book in my classroom. And in fact, I had a couple copies. I had students that wanted to check it out. They liked it. I used to recommend it to parents all the time. Um, I don't even know when this thing was first published, but it's still available. It's been around a long time and you can still even get it on Amazon or wherever. Um, it's a great book for getting kids interested in astronomy and getting them going with their first look um, up in the night sky and finding those constellations. So that is my favorite um, childhood book and really still one of my favorite books. I love this book. So. Cool. Highly recommended. The Stars by H.A. Ray. 
Yeah, I think um, show and tell. you can find that. Yeah, I think you can find that on Amazon. At least you can find yeah, it. Yeah, I know it's still around, and it. it's not that expensive, at least yeah. last time I checked. See, when you showed, when I saw it this morning, I'm like, that book looks really familiar, because I, when I was older, I gave away all my kids' books to, like, teachers and to, to libraries, um, so I don't have any of my children's books, you know, from okay. my childhood. So like, ah. I had stuff with star maps, I don't know what it was, and I think that was one of them. And I, I, I emailed my mom earlier today to see if she remembered. She's like, yeah, I remember the star maps, don't remember the name of the book. <laughs> um, but that's a good place to start. Um, and there's a, a lot of uh, recommendations happening in the comment thread for this Hangout uh, and also over on my wall. Um, so, for example, uh, this was one that uh, was kind of a Dr. Seuss-like book called You Will Go to the Moon. And it was published in 19, was it 59? I think 1959 mm -hmm. so before we went to the moon which is really cool um, so that was a, a, a favorite um, that was suggested I didn't write down the name crap <laughs> <laughs> so, ah, my notes are everywhere um, and uh, so there's a, there's a list of, of cool. some of our our, our uh, oh here's another one um, let's see this, this this one is a very unassuming cover, um, but the Observer's Book of Astronomy by Sir Patrick Moore was listed as another favorite. Mm -hmm. uh, let's see if I can screen share. So yeah, I just like went to Amazon and found all of these, and there's you know used copies that you can find of most of these books. Mm -hmm. and these are people's favorite books. Um, some of our viewers' favorite books. Um, as for for more recent books, uh, one of my favorites. There's like a whole series of these. It's uh, Max goes to blah de blah, <laughs> and this one goes to the moon, <laughs> and I have Jupiter and Mars here as well. Uh, you have one? <laughs> Where's yeah. Jupiter? Oh, Jupiter and Mars. Yeah. Mars. Yay. I think uh, so. These are by um, Jeff Bennett, and and the main character is uh, his, you know his dog Max, um, and so he's got these really cool and uh, very scientifically accurate uh, stories about this dog Max that goes visiting all these places. So it's got the children's book aspect, it's got beautiful artwork, um, it has a story, and then it's got the stuff on the side with more information uh, about what's going on um, in the story, a little bit more scientific information for older kids. Uh, so, so those books I, I really like. I was not a kid when they came out, but I like them now because I'm a big kid. Um, Rachel, I, I saw you posted uh, another Dr. Seuss-like yeah, this is the one that we do with DSBK. It's called There's Oh gosh. Yeah. There's no place like space. <laughs> um, and it's a rhymer, rhyming book, but it teaches you a monomic to help remember the planets. And oh, I actually I have Do we have both, both versions? I have both versions. <laughs> the Pluto is a planet and isn't a planet version. Um, so. Yeah, yeah, no, I remember um, yeah, I remember uh, Kelsey reading that to uh, to the students. So, so uh, DSBK is uh, Dark Skies Bright Kids. This is the program that uh, Rachel works for, and Jolene and I uh, used to work for. Is still connected to. It's a um, actually. Why don't you guys uh, tell us a little bit about Dark Skies Bright Kids? Oh. Rachel, you uh, everything. <laughs> <laughs> Who knows it all? Go ahead, Julie. Okay. okay, well, I'll, I'll talk a little bit about it. Uh, so Dark Skies Bright Kids is a uh, program that was started, oh, like, three years ago now? Maybe almost four? Almost um, four. It seems like a lot, but I think that's right. <laughs> 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 uh, but the basic idea of it was to try to uh, take uh, astronomy and uh, science outreach to local rural schools in Virginia um, with the idea that uh, these rural schools uh, very rarely get the opportunity to have um, these sort of outreach programs come to the schools just because there's much smaller number of kids than in bigger city schools. Um, but they also have the great advantage that they're rural and have great dark skies that we can um, take advantage of. And so the basic idea is that um, a group of volunteers at the University of Virginia, part of this program, uh, go to a school every Friday um, the same school for a semester every Friday and um, do fun uh, science-y projects uh, with the kids and then uh, try to get uh, telescopes to the school a couple of times uh, during the semester when the, as the weather cooperates and invite the students' families to come as well and do some observing at the school itself um, so that the kids 
and the families in the local community can get the opportunity to look at um, look at interesting astronomical objects that are sitting right in their backyard that uh, may have gone unappreciated or just un, um, underutilized, I suppose. Yeah. yeah. So that's the basic rundown. Of what <laughs> It was, yeah, I, I will admit it was one of my favorite parts of grad school, was doing yes. the DSBK on Friday. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and, and playing and science forward to. Yes. with third graders, yeah. Yeah, yeah. cool. Um, and so Dark Skies Bright Kids has been working on a children's book itself, and so I have, I have my copy that you guys sent me a while back. Yeah, um, I have my copy as well called Snapshots of the Universe. Hey, we all got <laughs> copies! Yay! Um, and so, uh, can you, would, would you like to tell me about how this book got started? Why did you, why did, why did we, why did you, I wasn't involved in the original decision to start it, so I could say why did you <laughs> uh, decide to start working on a children's book? Well, it, it started because um, one of our volunteers, uh, her name was Laura Jackson, um, was working with a student, a non-native English speaker, English as a second language student, and had, um, so she was basically translating into Spanish a lot of what was going on during the club. And to help communicate with her, she started, she went a little nuts and she made all of this art. <laughs> she um, these beautiful, which is the actual quote we have on our website, um, this beautiful art out of layered paper. Um, and she was using it to help teach this uh, student. Um, and uh, then we decided that, hey, we should put it together and use it more long term. I think that's yeah, I think reasonably it, accurate. Yeah. So here, here, for example, is is the moon, La Luna, and yeah, I remember seeing. I, I think you guys have it framed. Have some of this artwork framed, or at least laminated somewhere in the apartment. It's this layered, textured paper um, that comes out really well uh, in the illustration. So this isn't even like digital digital art. This is you know she made this like scrapbooking type. Yeah. Um, and, and the book kind of came out of that. And so there's a there's a Spanish. Uh, oh gosh, I'm going to Chile in a month. <laughs> Instantaneous del Universo is, is the Spanish title. Yeah. Um, so what is the process of putting a kid's book together like for a bunch of grad students who otherwise <laughs> <laughs> they'd be writing a children's book? Lots of volunteers, as usual. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I know Jolene, you you were you led the uh, the writing effort. So in addition to to the artwork, yeah. uh, you led the the writing effort. And so we've got these these speech bubbles um, from these 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 objects as they are talking. Um, so why don't you tell us a little bit about that process? Yeah. So when when we decided um, to do something a little bit more permanent, I kind of jumped at the chance to do the uh, writing just because I thought it would be fun and it was kind of seemed like a nice uh, creative outlet. Um, I like to do a little bit of writing. Um, I used to write poetry. I haven't in a very long time, so it seemed to be a, a way of trying to get that uh, get that out. And so I started working, you know, just thinking about how to do this. And another one of the grad students at the time, uh, Gail Zazowski, um, was the one who had the idea of actually writing the text in first person, um, so that we, because we have like the artwork was all done with these big happy smiley faces. Yeah. Um, on all of the objects, and so uh, she had the idea of, of trying to write it such that uh, these very cheerful astronomical objects would then be talking to this was the talking to the reader. Um, yeah, I, I think we all have favorites. I, I love the Jupiter one, um, and so it was just a matter of trying to sit down and write something that was fun, friendly, and informational um, all at the same time, which actually turned out to be very difficult um, to yes. try to get things to say things because I wanted to say things. Um, in a way that was somewhat, that was not boring, um, so that it was interesting, um, you know, linguistically and also factually accurate, and then also age appropriate, which turned out to be the most difficult um, thing. Which we, age, we got, um, yeah, sorry, Julie. Which ages were you kind of aiming for? Uh, we were aiming for uh, third through fifth grade. It was a group of students that we were working with with DSPK, and so we had the idea of targeting sort of the same age group. Yeah, that's um, but yeah. I don't remember what it was like to be a third grader and trying to read, <laughs> <laughs> as I discovered. No. Um, so we uh, we we had some of the you know the kids reading the book and realized that sort of overshot the target a little bit, and so there are a couple of iterations of trying to back the text down a little bit, um, 
Can but I, yeah, can I read one. Can I read one? Yeah, go for it. Okay, I want to read Mars. <laughs> I am cold, dry, and rusty red. I know I am a puny planet, but I can boast that I have the tallest volcano and largest canyon in the solar system. I have many human spacecraft roaming across my face and flying through my skies to study me. I look like a bright ruby in Earth's night sky. People love to write exciting stories about me. <laughs> <It's> so cute. <laughs> Yeah, I, I was I was involved. There's also um, an information, a little bit of more information in the back um, on each of the objects where we went a little deeper and went above the age appropriate level for the parents so that they could get a little more information. And and I think I was part of that process. And it was it was like you said, a lot of iterations and a lot of haggling over words, individual yes. words, yes. <laughs> <laughs> because we wanted to be precise and we wanted to be accurate and we wanted it to make sense in a tiny box and and yeah that was yes. Um, yes. a tough a tough deal i i think i think the one of the hardest ones i had was trying to describe jupiter yeah. and trying to get a concept of atmosphere that was correct yeah and understandable because for a planet such as jupiter which is very massive the concept of atmosphere is very different from how you feel, you know, the Earth's atmosphere. Um, and so trying to describe that without turning it into a dictionary turned out to be very hard. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so that, that required a number of iterations. I, I, I think, I think um, the universe was another one where it's like, okay. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> describe the universe. Yeah, In two yeah. sentences. Yeah. <laughs> Um, Rachel, you did a lot of the design work. You did a lot yes. of the design work. <laughs> um, do you want to tell us a little bit about that? Because watching you go through that process was just mind blowing. Oh, I think you're muted. Sound, sound, sound. Oh no! Oh, no. Oh, no. Again? Uh, uh. Hmm. Oh no. Okay. Um, but like I said, what I do remember is is I never uh, expected that, you know, because we all think, oh, you just kind of slap it together and blah, blah, blah. I don't know. That's what I thought when, when the project kind of started. And there was a lot of more detailed design work that went into getting the artwork into a format that would show up on the page and then getting the text um, into the right format and right, choosing it's, the it's design probably not layout. Just not just the art, but the the words. Right, right. Right, and then yes. how much to even put on a page? Did you guys yes. have to deal with that? And how much text versus picture? And yeah, and there was also um, we made changes uh, to the original um, art as well. So if I remember right. correctly, yeah, because you could see that. Yeah, a couple of us we 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 got nitpicky with the art. Um, yeah, so. It wasn't that perfectly astronomically accurate. And so we, yes, so, so, the, so the moon was one that had to be adjusted for scientific um, accuracy <laughs> um, because the crescent originally showed the background all the way through, which is the most common artistic way of representing the moon, but is also <laughs> right. factually inaccurate since you the moon is dark, but it is still there, and you cannot see stars yes. <laughs> uh, through the moon. <laughs> but it could keep its nose and its mouth, right? Yeah, that's fine. <laughs> yes, that's, that's, yes, we're, we're that, was, that. that was fine. <laughs> We're, we're um, totally, yeah. <laughs> and then uh, there was one other instance, um, oh, and I forget now which one it was. Um, so Ra Rachel might actually remember. Um, but in the, in the back of the book, um, so we, we had decided that instead of giving more detail about um, the individual planets, they ended up being just grouped together into their planet families. Yeah. And so there was a little bit of uh, computer um, processing of the images to make it look like it was one of the original um, planet patterns on the background. When because this was after Laura left UVA, she had graduated yeah. by then. So we were yeah. like, oh no! So it was yeah. a little bit of creative cutting and pasting to get those uh, planet families to look like it was one of its own original art pieces as well. Well, there was a Pluto debate at one point. Because I think uh, Pluto, w Pluto was involved in the original 
set. That, that may be true. I think Pluto yeah. Pluto was its own thing, and so um, yes. and a lot of us were like, no, nah, that's not how it works anymore. Pluto's <laughs> not a planet. Um, so the dwarf planets got their own. Yes. So, you know, we wanted to oh, give props yes. to all the dwarf planets, to Ceres and to uh, Maki Maki isn't a dwarf planet yet, is it? I can't remember who else is. Oh, uh, yes, and H Hamea. Hamea. Um, yeah, here we go. Eris, Maki Maki, and Hamea. It's in the text. Um, yeah. And yeah, because Bluto's the one speaking about, about uh, his or her sisters. <laughs> or yes. To yeah. And that was the one where we found out um, that we wanted to add that one, but the, the really pretty background paper that mm -hmm. she had used, she couldn't find anymore. Uh, because it was scrapbooking paper that, you know, that inventory changes over. And so that was the one that was create, creatively uh, post-processed. Right. Image post-processing to uh, get the original background right. uh, to match the original paper. That was fun. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So some serious graphic design art skills uh, were learned by... Rachel, who's who's unfortunately having camera problems and, and audio problems, um, and uh, and the rest of the group. Uh, I know Andre was Andre involved at some point. He was, uh, yes, he was, was doing... involved with a lot of the graphics. A couple of other people. Um, yeah, so this this was a volunteer project that, like most of the things we did at DSBK, started as a hey, this would be cool, and blew up into this giant, <laughs> but awesome giant uh, project. Yes, and also to give more props to uh, Laura, um, her her handwriting is also featured prominently oh, yeah. all throughout the book because it was turned into an a computer font. Yeah, so, um, so so the most recent yeah some of the emails I've been on uh, the the book is currently going through the copyright process now. Um, the book itself will be available um, under some sort of creative. Commons licensing, I think, hmm. but the font itself is being is is yes. they're doing a copyright for the font itself since it is a person's handwriting, you know. That's kind of uh, and, and the artwork um, is is going under some some kind of licensing right now. Um, I, I want to remind viewers. Uh, I should have done this in the beginning, but uh, if you want to comment, you can comment on the event page if you have a question or a comment. Uh, I've been I've been watching some of the comments coming in. Um, I, I love that you guys think this is a really fantastic looking book. Um, so if you comment on the event page or on the YouTube channel, we'll see that. If you're watching anywhere else and want to use Twitter, use the hashtag Ooh. Learning Space, and that will uh, get you uh, into our comment feed as well. Um, and actually, there's a question here um, from Will Donahue, um, and this was going to be one of my questions, but since Rachel is MIA. Okay, okay, oh, we have chat from Rachel. Okay, good. Book will be copyrighted, but will also have creative comments. Um, but the question is, and I think Rachel might best answer this um, for this book, are there any plans to put it into a web app ebook format? Um, hmm. I don't know, Jolene, if you know of any recent developments. This is something we talked about all through yes. development. Uh, I, I... Rachel is saying yes, yes, yes. Um, yes, 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 yes. Idea. Okay. Um, my, yeah, I, I, that was something I, I kind of harped on to the point of un being annoying. It's like, we need to put out an electronic mm -hmm. format. The original, I know the original idea was to get it into the hands, literally physically into the hands of kids. Yes. But I, yes, and I think, I think a lot of the issues, as far as I'm aware, and just based on sort of what Ra uh, Rachel's commenting on our uh, private chat, is that um, since it is an all-volunteer thing, um, mm -hmm. and doing things like putting um, books into classrooms and um, putting things into uh, web apps and stuff like that, is it? It also needs a financial backing. Right. Um, and so I know we've had a lot of efforts of attempts at fundraising, mm -hmm. um, but we really needed somebody full time uh, to work on the ebook. And yeah. so, and as far as I can tell, also from looking at the um, the way DSPK has been going, the, the club is expanding, schools want DSPK in their classrooms, the after school program just, um, and it's really uh, as well as one, right, one off events, um, not to mention the fact, um, which uh, Rachel's commenting, one thing we hadn't talked about is that DSPK ha also has a planetarium, and so they're working on developing shows for this, and we only have so much manpower. Yeah. Um, yeah. There's, so there's I think a it, it's a lot of. Force. Yes, we have so many ideas and so much excitement, but limited amount of time and most of our volunteers are, you know, trying to also do PhDs on top of, um, you know, all this outreach stuff. And so it's really just a matter of limits. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, 
Yeah, so it's it's mostly graduate student and now actually quite a few more undergraduates um, since yes. since we've left, I think. Um, yeah. In addition to you know, every once in a while there'll be a postdoc involved, but it's all pretty much been people in their volunteer time who want to do outreach and love outreach. But yes. uh, and uh, yeah, so funding for the book has been yeah. The, 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 um, I know there's been some. I mean, since it's an English and Spanish book, there's been partnership with. I want. I don't want to say organizations because I'm not entirely sure. Um, but there's been okay. partners. Partners with organizations to get the book um, to schools in South America as well as in Virginia. Um, so they've been looking for money along those lines. Okay, I can say it's it's NOAO, National Optical Astronomical Observatory. They've been working to to, to get because uh, you know we have they have these huge fabulous telescopes in Chile, and um, so they can uh, get some kind of um, uh, funding to distribute. Because you, you guys, I, I take it, you want the funding to get the book into the hands of the kind of students that you work with. So these these kids right. in rural areas who don't get access to to these to uh, universities and to, to big science museums and science clubs, um, and uh, so you you want to get books out there. But um, I think it, it's important that people who can get an online version would love to see it, um, and there would be a way. Hopefully, a way to yes. a way to distribute electronically as well. Yes. Um, yeah, and I think you need a full time person to do the ebook ebook production. Um, a PDF could be made available, but but it, it's a, a, an actual, you know, ebook takes a whole another realm of production. Yes. So, yeah. Yeah, um, and the and the nice so thing about maybe that is, the yeah. answer to the question I've been rambling about. Right, and, and the nice thing about the the Spanish translation is that um, it, it works well both for um, audiences that we would want to target in the United States, since that's you know the sort of most common language spoken other than English. But then also the you know the United States has a lot of partnerships with uh, Chilean observatories, where yeah. of, of course the language spoken is Spanish. So it's a multi multi avenues for distribution that we're looking at. Right, um, and in addition. Um... There's, uh, since some of the DSBK, former DS UVA DSBK volunteers have gone on to universities in Canada, uh, there is work on a French version as well uh, mm. to be distributed. Yes. I, I don't know as much about that side of the project, um, but I think Ryan Lynch and, and Greg Sivakoff have been working to get a French translation of the book made that could be distributed in Canadian schools as well. Yes, I think a lot of progress has been made on the... Um, on the actual translations, right. um, and then the Spanish translation was easy because we had a lot, several n native Spanish speakers as grad students at UVA. Yes, and, and so different types was, of Spanish speakers yeah. too. So yeah. we could get a, you know a Spanish that kind of worked for you know lots of different regional variations as well. Right, right, yeah. So we we were lucky in that sense, and that we had we had that we had that expertise in house. Yes. Um, and I wanted to screen share a picture. You mentioned uh, we ran it through with the the kids of DSBK. Um, this is a picture that Rachel took uh, at the McCormick Observatory at the University of Virginia of some of the, our our DSBK kids a few years ago. Oh my gosh, they've probably moved on to middle school now, haven't they? Oh, probably. Oh, so <laughs> old. They, they they were elementary school kids at the time. Um, and because uh, uh, the local NBC station was doing a feature on the program and on the book, and so we we got some nice video and and shots of them um, reading the book. But uh, we actually went through this with the club and had them read the book and tell us, you know, does this make sense and. Yes, that was very enlightening. That <laughs> following that, there was a major revisions of the text. <laughs> was, it, was there anything that sticks out in your mind as no. to uh, some of the words that... were just too big? Um, celestial is a very difficult word for that age group to say. <laughs> yes, yes, it's a pretty word, and that's why it is. It's a very pretty word. We used it. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Cool. Um, so yeah, I guess if if there's any other, um, are there? Uh, any ways that people watching this could possibly help the project? Um, I'm going to wait for Rachel to type. <laughs> because, like I said, she's the one who's, who's most closely related to this now, I think. Um, uh, I know that, yeah? Oh, well, I was going to say, I do know that um, you know, DSPK um, has a web page, and they do have links on there with some information about uh, ways donate. to yeah, donate time, supplies, Money, thoughts, expertise, um, and so 
um, they can learn more about. Let's see if I can get this link for you. Um, I have the regular DSPK link I can put in the event page. Okay, yeah. And then there's a sidebar um, where you can read more about most of what sure. we've talked about, just what we've been doing um, with the book, um, as well as access to a lot of the resources we put together. But another link on there is uh, if you're interested in learning more or donating time, energy. Yeah, if you're, yeah. If you're in the UVA area, I think time is the biggest <laughs> right. thing yeah. that we need a supply of. Um, yeah, there, there's an Amazon wish list on there for everything mm -hmm. from astronomy, like rocket kits and, and uh, snack boxes, and because we feed the kids. <laughs> um, yeah, it takes place after like school um, where the kids haven't eaten uh, since lunchtime, and so we like to have full bellies, yes. or at least not empty ones. Yes. <laughs> Yes, not so, MDR. Jolene, um, did you use the book actually incorporated into a DSBK activity um, once you had it, or has this you been know, something you just kind of shared? And, and yeah, actually, we we have not. We we have tried uh, with the after school programs to keep it pretty active and uh, very hands on. So, so we did have books available uh, for the kids uh, to look at. Um, and I believe the book was available then, but we hadn't built anything specifically around. Mm -hmm. There, there uh, was the occasionally book. story time. I have this very clear picture of Genevieve <laughs> de Messier sitting in this like little chair, and all the kids around her uh, doing doing story time. Story, yeah. But that is one of the the, the le since since we focused on yeah the the, the very active stuff. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. But you know there was the occasional story time. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. And I think if people, um, one thing that I, I, I'd like to see is is expansion of this concept of doing the after school club. Um, and I know that uh, DSPK, in addition to the children's book, is working on a set of ac like lesson plans, activity plans, um, that is uh, going to be finished this semester, I think. Um, and these will be available, those will be available for free anywhere um, if you want to incorporate the hands-on stuff into your classroom or start your own after-school group. I was just talking to one of my coworkers here. It's like, we need to do this in this area because we have a similar population of the, the rural and the dark skies and, and um, wanting to do, to do astronomy outreach. So here in Illinois. Yeah, and some of our most popular uh, lesson plans are up on the, up on the web page, mm -hmm. like the comets mm -hmm. and the invisible light one that you, Nicole, I know you put that one together. That was I, I like that one a lot. <laughs> <laughs> that none of that was original. It was like, oh, ideas from other people smush <laughs> into. It worked very well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, know, the know, comets know. are always popular, and we have both the uh, very fun sciencey kind and also the edible kind. Yes. Uh, yes. Both of which um, are yeah. good. Yeah, and the one that's made of dry ice was the recipe that Phil Plate used on his Discovery Channel special. So yeah. go us, because he emailed <laughs> us saying, hey, guys, your comments are awesome. Mine fall apart. How do you do it? <laughs> and yeah, so they, the, uh, that was our comment on the Discovery Channel. I was very proud of that. Um, if there are uh, any other, I want to put it out there that if there are any other questions, um, uh, I see uh, Guido Bibra asked if it's in English, Spanish, and French. Is there perhaps a German translation plan? <laughs> and Rachel has responded <laughs> um, with the uh, the DSVK email address. Um, you know, you guys are, are happy to partner with other organizations if if other people want it, people want to see it happen in other languages. I think that would be cool to have a whole suite of them. I mean, it's not a very long book to translate. Obviously, you've got you know several pages of this this you know this much text. Um, so yeah, if there are people who want to see it in other languages, um, DSPK is happy to partner. Yeah, I think we could get some volunteers. Yeah, yeah. So that sounds really cool. Um, trying to looking to see if there's any last questions. Um, do you have any other questions, Georgia? Hmm. I don't think I do. Oh, and since um, DSPK is an educational partner with CosmoQuest, as soon as you guys have a version of the book available that can go online, um, we'll be distributing it through our channels as well. So if you if you pop over to CosmoQuest regularly, you'll you'll see the book featured there as well. So if you're watching this uh, and and want to to know when the electronic version comes out, we'll definitely keep you surprised. <laughs> <laughs> I will be all over that. Um, yeah. And I think that's it. 
Um, any last words, Jolene or Rachel? Rachel is texting. <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> what are you working on now, Jolene? Um, right now, I am working on uh, studying red giant stars in open clusters. Um, cool. So I just went to Chile uh, last month. Sweet. I'm going to Chile yeah. in a month. I need to talk to you. <laughs> okay, that's good. I can I can help out. And I that's haven't good. learned to speak Spanish yet, um, so you can get by. I keep telling myself I'm going to, and I should, and I, I should, but I haven't yet. It's the one language I one. have any experience with, so I probably don't remember much of it, but it's better than when I was in Germany and completely lost. Uh, that, so. I did much better in Germany. That's yes, the only that's right. I have a <laughs> you, you did learn German. That's right, yes. Um, so thank you guys. Thank you, Jolene. Yeah, thank, thank you, Rachel, for coming. I'm so thank sorry the audio much. didn't work, Rachel. <laughs> Sad. Um, yeah, if you want uh, any other information about Dark Skies Bright Kids, if you Google Dark Skies Bright Kids, it'll take you to, to the website. Um, but it's, uh, I've put the link in the event page. It's www.astro.virginia.edu slash DSBK. So it's not intuitive, but if you Google Dark Skies Bright Kids, you'll get them. Um, you'll get uh, a there's a page about the book. There's a place that links to places where you can help. You could donate money, time, snacks, anything mm -hmm. like that. Um, oh, and you can also get all, uh, all the lesson plans they use for free um, to use in your classroom or, or use with your kids. Um, i trying to think if there's anything else. Um, no? <laughs> <laughs> um, so our next Hangout, actually, uh, Pamela Gay is, is helping out with a Hangout that starts in about 15 minutes. Uh, over on the My Moon page, so I wanted to announce there'll be a hangout. Um, I lost the link for that one already. Uh, for for My Moon, so uh, if you're on the YouTube, if you're watching on YouTube, I, she's already commented with some information on that. So in 15 minutes is another hangout with the My Moon people, um, and then tomorrow is Thursday, and so the Planetary Society hangout with Emily Lakdawalla starts at noon Pacific. Uh, we do the weekly space hangout at noon Pacific on Friday, so come join us. We'll be talking about all the space news that you could ever want to hear <laughs> with a little bit of silliness. Uh, and then Sunday nights we do the virtual star party where uh, we have astronomers hook up their telescopes. You can see things in the night sky and then there's a little bit more silliness. Uh, <laughs> it's only gotten sillier as the months have run on. It's, it's pretty fantastic. Um, you can contact uh, me or Georgia at CosmoQuest with uh, the email address educate at CosmoQuest.org if you have any further questions on stuff we talk about on this show. And uh, that's it. I think we are all done for the day. So thanks for coming. Okay, thank you very thanks, much. Everybody. Thank you. Mm -hmm.